All right, following our course outline for today, the 14th of October, we're going to continue working on Unit 9, which is our uh, introduction to logo design, vector design, starting with pretty simple black shape vectors, straightforward. But there's nothing simple about making a symbol that's original that is also clear, engaging, and versatile, which is our goal. So we have a theme for this semester, which is a personal patriotic symbol. These themes will be used to support our NLC Veterans Center. And don't worry about that end product yet. Right now we're just creating our own input for, uh, for something that represents our student point of view on patriotism and personality. So what I'm doing as the instructor is I'm interpreting patriotism for this morning as a connection to this campus, right? And this campus identity. You might interpret it as connection to this country, to the national identity, and our nation definitely has symbols, bald eagles, stars, stripes. And inspiration can be found very widely in our armed services, right? So I especially took inspiration from this one. This is the contemporary kind of digital Navy insignia. We have some other, you know, contemporary versions, right? And there are lots and lots of versions. These are not logos. These are symbols. But what I can do is take that, or I can do a, a new search of it to inspire my idea. But then I want to mash it up with my own personality, my own connections, right? So what I've done with my sketches is my central symmetrical kind of takes the, the bars and stripes, the wings, and then simplifies the feet and the tail and changes the head from the bald eagle to one that's going to represent our campus mascot, which is Nico. So if I look up the Northeast Lakeview College, Nico symbol, see if we get anything. So this is the Nico symbol that you'll see everywhere. There's our mascot that's based on it. This is kind of the official mascot graphic. And what's interesting about the Nico design, so I'm going to download that. It's going to all help. These are our campus colors. So when we do a color version of the logo of the symbol, this can be very helpful. So this is the official mascot image, which is both an in and a uh, and a bird at the same time, just in black shapes. And then this is the more complex one with the Nico head. And sometimes you'll see the full body, sometimes you'll just see the head. Personally, I really dislike how they put, just in terms of clarity, I really dislike how they put the full college logo with all the type on the shirt <laughs> no matter what, it doesn't really work. Because that's how these symbols, these graphic symbols, are different than our official logo, which is this. But you can be inspired by the Alamo symbol as well. So there's all these different versions of identity. Symbols can help us understand identity. So now if I take those... And I just sketch loosely, inspired by them. I have to turn them into black shapes that are clear. So when I'm doing my rough thumbnail sketches for Proving Ground 2, I'm trying to be really simplified, showing what the black shapes would be. So I don't have a lot of detail or line art, right? Everything that's outlined becomes a black shape. 
If I wanted an eye cut out from this, I would draw that as an outline, but it would mean that it was a black shape with a cutout. So just like a lot of the inspirations, don't think in terms of detail, don't think in terms of color, think in terms of black shapes like this. All of these are just what are called black shape symbols. Not even black and white, because everything that is white here would be blue if it was on a blue background. It would be gray if it was on a, were on a gray background. But they get a lot of complexity. So here we have one that's central symmetrical, the Navy anchor, right? Here we have one that's central symmetrical for the Air Force, but it's also a play of positive and negative space. That's because it cuts out one shape from another shape. So you have this nice kind of high-tech version of an eagle made of, this is a pretty complex logo, made of the stripes, right, of the flag, the bars. And then the star, the five-pointed star, is completely created just by the negative space. Here we have the U.S. Army star, which is cut out from a square. So the only one of these that's not purely central symmetrical on this page, which is the most basic entry, is this navy symbol, right? And this is, actually, no, this is Marines, I believe. But why is this not? Well, because it's tilted. You can see it's intentionally tilted a little bit to the, to the right. It's not super dynamic, but your eye is meant to flow through it. So here we see the difference between central symmetrical, slightly dynamic, though it could be more dynamic, and then a play of positive and negative space. And then it's easy to add color to some of those. So this is an updated version of that that really kind of plays with the, the sharp edges that digital design can give you. Yeah, so all of these are very helpful. What I'm going to do is for my refined sketch, I'm going to start trimming some of this. Or maybe research for sharper examples. So a US Navy symbol. There we go. Nice, clear. Open link and new tab. Now what's interesting about using our federal government symbols is they're all paid for with tax money. And because they're paid for with public funds, they are all public domain. So this is different than if you stole the Walt Disney logo or the Coca-Cola logo. These are actually owned by everyone, even though they're trademarks that you can't you know, infringe on, that's just because you don't want to be confused with the U.S. Navy. We can take that image and we can make it our own without any fear of legislation against us. Or, But there are other laws besides copyright infringement like libel. but we are able to use those pixels for our own purposes because it's paid for with our money as citizens of this country. Just like we can use James Webb and Hubble Space Telescope imagery since it's paid for by NASA. Where did it go? I just downloaded it. And they call this their logo right now. Notice how it's just a black, black shape with negative space around it. Right? So it works on white, works on red, works on blue. So that's the inspiration for, for my first sketch. 
The second one, I just wanted something that felt fast, right? That was more like the Air Force. And so I was looking at symbols of, of birds, you know, of Nighthawks, and I wanted to combine it with that lightning bolt, kind of a symbol of power. And the reason it looks weird here is because I'm going to try to, if I use that approach, I'm going to use the helmet on the bird, which is a little weird, but it keeps it from being too generic. And then for my play of positive negative space, I took the head of Nico for the campus, this head, and I flipped it to the other side and I cut it out of the larger space of this kind of chevron lightning bolt to represent power. And so this is an example of a play of positive and negative space, but Instead of it being a central symmetrical play of positive negative space like I have on the whiteboard, this is a more dynamic play of positive negative space. So both work. What is a play of positive negative space? It's when the empty space gives you a secondary image. Right? So the, the most basic way to approach it is to take a simple shape as your dominant shape and then to cut out a secondary shape from that dominant shape in a way that it lets the empty space flow into it. And remember, we have all of these examples in these slides, like we saw in the last videos, of what we're going for. So with our symbols, we're trying to make an iconic pictorial symbol. We're not trying to rely on text, because that would be a logo type or a combined mark where we use both together. And we want it to be clear, engaging, and versatile. And we want to sketch it with these three approaches in mind. So central symmetrical doesn't need to be perfectly symmetrical. But it means that the eye goes to the middle and then goes out. Dynamic means the eye moves across it at speed. So you try to avoid horizontals and verticals because curves and diagonals move the eye in a much more dynamic way. And then the play of positive and negative space is you take a, a dominant shape and then you cut out a secondary shape from the dominant shape. Another example. Professional example. And then the next step uh, you're going to post your thumbnail sketches. So if I posted these into Proving Ground 2, then I would look at my classmates' sketches and I would give input on which of those three approaches I thought was best for them. So if I looked at these three and say, I really like your dynamic one. It's a little bit more complicated, but I think it's more the most engaging. Right. So if I put that comment in, which is why you need to label your approaches in your Proving Ground 2 so that your fellow students can call out the ones they like. Then I take all that input from my classmates and I decide, okay, now it's time to make a refined sketch. And a refined sketch of your logo means you actually try to draw it the way you want your vector to look. And you can draw it by hand, like this one. Um, I'll often when I'm taking a logo seriously, I'll draw it in pencil and then I'll, I'll do photocopies and do what's called blue line tests. Because remember, your logo has to be black shapes. It is not line based. So my blue line test plays with different ways I can turn this into black shapes. So you'll notice here, the really subtle NLC in the reflection in the helmet is done with the negative space. Here it's done with the positive space. And ultimately, I, I liked this approach best. So then I just used the computer to turn that all into black. And then that's my refined sketch to make a clean logo in a vector program, right? Where we have to push and pull with anchor points to create the clean shape by the end. All right. So to show you what becomes of that logo, why vectors are so helpful and useful. Let me open up some of these examples. Again, to use Nico as an example, right? 
So vectors are the most flexible, the most uh, 